Welcome back to video five of topic seven, algorithm design and problem solving. This time we're going to be looking at finding errors in algorithms. This is for IGCSE and O-level computer science. We've covered quite a lot so far. We've looked at trace tables, test data. We've looked at verification and validation checks, and we've gone through the development life cycle. But now we're going to be looking at identifying errors in algorithms. In the last video, we looked at trace tables and how we can um, follow an algorithm step by step by inserting test data and seeing what happens to the values. I've got a little one here um, whereby let's have a little look at this. We're going to import value one, which um, from our test data here, um, we've got one, two, and three as our test data. Input value one, value two, and value three, as you can see here. If value one is greater than value two and value one is greater than value three, then output value one. LA value 2 is greater than value 1 and value 2 is greater than value 3, then output value 2. ELIF output value 3. Well, value 3 was 3 and we've outputted value 3. And then finally output value 1 plus value 2 plus value 3 and we should get 6. We can check it again with some different data. So we're going to repeat the process. I'm going to put my values in 10, 5 and 2. Okay. It should output value 1, which is 10. So um, output value 1, 10. OK. And then finally, it should output value 1 plus value 2 plus value 3. So it should output 17, which it has done. OK. I'm then going to move on to some exam questions, um, which I want you to have a little look at. We're going to look back at some past papers from previous years um, and see if we can determine what is wrong with the code and how we can change it. Okay, I'm going to use this first example taken from the 2021 um, paper 2. And this is question 2. An algorithm has been written in pseudocode to generate 50 positive random integers with values less than or equal to 100. These random integers are stored in the array rand number, and this is a list. Another word for array is list, certainly in Python. The function rand xy generates a random integer greater than or equal to x, okay, and less than y. For example, rand 1, 4, where the value is 1 for x and 4 for y, generates 1, 2, and 3. Obviously not generating the last number, which is 4. So, if you have a look at this code, there are four possible errors inside this. Let's zoom in so we can see what's happening here. First of all, we're going to assign the value 0 to count. Okay, then we're going to use a repeating program, repeat until, repeat until the count is less than or equal to 50. Um, we're going to repeat what? We're going to repeat random number um, and the array we've, start, we've, we've sorted out counter. We're going, to, we're going to put in the values using the random generator 1, 100. So any number, okay, between 1 and 100, not including 100. We're going to count, or we're going to count up in twos looking at this. So count plus two um, has been assigned to count, and then until count is less than, as I say, or equal to 50. So four errors in this code. Well, we're using the word, if we look at this, we're using the word count throughout. But for some reason, here in the array, we're using the word counter. We've either got to change the, all the word count to counter, or we're going to change this word counter to count. So I'm just going to highlight that as being one of our errors. So line three, change counter to count. That becomes count, okay, to match everything else. So here we go. So that's the first one. Now, if I look at this here, based on what it says here, and, gener and here, generating 1, 2, or 3, this would need to be 101. And then it would generate the numbers 1 to 100. So I found two errors there. It's counting up in twos, which is no good at all. So I'm going to write like this. It should be counting count equals count plus 1. So again, I would get rid of that and I would put count plus 1 for that bit there. And then finally, until count is less than or equal to 50, well, less than or equal to 50, we want it to do 50 positive numbers. If we have a little think about this, 
it must be count either is greater than or equal to 50 or it could be simply just until count equals 50. Okay? So there are four errors. So now I would simply go, so I'd write it as count has been assigned zero. Okay, repeat. But then rand num. And we're going to assign that the value rand one comma one zero one. Then we're going to put count in again. Count and assign that count plus one. And then finally, until equals 50. That's how I would do that one. Sorry, it's a little bit messy, but that is how I would do that algorithm. So we've identified one, two, three, four errors, and we've put in alternatives to how we could get it to work. Okay, nice and simple. Okay, for this second one, um, examine the following code. We've got some code here, input A, B, all the way down to input L. We've got 12 different values. Then on the next line, top T, probably for total, um, has been assigned the value of A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way to L added together. And then it's going to output the average equals, basically the total T divided by the number, which is 12, to give us the average. So that's what we're describing in this pseudocode. So I will write that down. Inputs some values. Okay. It then it finds a total. Total. And finally it prints. Well, it calculates and prints average. Okay. So that's A. B. Describe how the pseudocode could be altered to allow any number of values to be inputted. Well, we're going to have to come up with some kind of loop system, aren't we? So use... A loop okay we could elaborate on that use a loop um, such as a while loop or a for loop what else can we do um, allow the user to determine last value or number of values anything else what about keep count of values entered or or Maybe keep a running total. Okay, so B, use a loop, allow the user to determine the last value or the number of values entered, keep count of the number of values entered, or keep a running total. So that would answer B. Now C, we're going to rewrite the code. So based, I'm going to base this on the last program we looked at, the, um, this, the first example. So I'm going to set... Um, T, we said, I said sort of that was total. So total has been assigned zero. Okay, so that starts the counter. But then I'm going to input um, some kind of limit. What we got? Input number limit. Okay, so we could do a while loop. While number limit is less than or equal to, while number limit is less than, do this. Or we could use a for loop. I think for this I'm going to use a for loop. For, I'm going to use a for loop. I'm going to, so for loop um, count, for loop count, we're going to assign the value 1, 2, and then number limit. So it's going to go from 1 to the number limit set. Limit. It's the same as that. Yeah. So total, assign the value 0, input number limit, for loop count, um, assign 1 to the number limit. And then what we're going to do, we're going to input a number, yeah, one of these numbers. And then I've got to make the total grow. So total, we need to assign the value total um, plus number. Okay, input number, total is total plus number. Um, and then we're going to go next, because it's a for loop, remember. Next, um, loop count, loop count, yep. And then finally, I've got to do this. So I've got to output this message. So I'm just going to use the same message as that. Output, same message as this. Output average equals, and then I'll put a comma in there, total. 
so we've got total at the top, total um, divided by, because it's an average, divided by what? Divided by the whatever we put in for the number limit, so number limit. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So line one, total has been assigned the value zero, and then we're going to input a number limit by the user. We're going to create a for loop. I've just put for loop count, and we're going to assign that one to whatever the number limit is. So it's going to count from one to the whatever we've put in. We're going to input a number, and we're going to assign total plus number to the total. Up at the top here. We're going to go next loop count, so every time going round and round and round until it gets to num limit. And then we're going to output average equals total divided by num limit. So that should get us full marks there with a little bit of luck. Okay? Okay, and finally for this next one, uh, this is from the October-November 2021 paper, as you can see, part B, question two. We have uh, some more pseudocode. And this one is meant to be performing like a calculator. Okay, so we're going to continue. We're going to have a little look, read through it. Continue um, has been assigned the value 1. While continue equals 0. Okay, so continue has been assigned the value 1, but while continue equals 0. There's actually a problem in that um, first line, so I'm just going to highlight that. It could be the second line, but I think it's going to be that first one. While the counter equals zero. Okay, so I think the counter should be zero there. So I'm just going to change this to continue. It's been assigned the value zero. Um, while continue equals zero, output enter one for plus, two for minus, um, three for multiply, or four for divide. Input the operator. Okay, that seems, that seems all fine. Yep. Yeah. Um, output value, enter the first value, so the user is going to enter the first value to go into the calculator. Um, the user inputs that first value. The output, enter the second value. Okay. Output value 2. Okay, well, output value 2. Why would it output value 2? Well, we've already inputted value 1 here in line 6. So surely we're going to input value 2 in line 8. So let me have a little look at this. I'm just going to put a highlight over that one, and I'm just going to go, because I think this is the right one, I'm going to go input value 2 would be my thought there. Okay, then for line 9, if operator, if operator, what the, what's that about? If operator, then we've got what looks like a case statement, a list of 1, 2, 3, 4, so if answer... Um, if somebody chose 1, they're going to do addition. Yeah. If they choose 2, they're going to do subtraction. If they choose 3, they're going to do multiplication. And if they choose 4, they're going to choose um, divide. But if operator, it's a case statement, so it needs to be a case statement. So let's highlight that bit. Just highlight that bit. And that should be a case statement. So I'm going to write in my case statement, which we, we know is, because it says end, end case on line 14, it should be case of, because that's how we write case statements, case of, and of course it's operator, because that's what we're using in that if statement, case of operator. Okay, so please excuse the horrible writing, but there we go, we've got three already. So I've, I've set continue to zero on line one. Line eight, Output the value should be input the value 2, and line 9 is the case of operator. So, let's carry on. So, end case, fair enough. And then we're going to output the answer is value 1. Well, value 1 is one of the inputs we've put in, so surely the output, the answer is answer. Any of, um, whether they've chosen 1, 2, 3, or 4, the answer should be answer so I'm just going to highlight that um, the answer shouldn't be that should it it should be the answer is answer so output the answer is answer whether it's one two three or four so that is how many we've we got there there's five errors one two three four output do you wish to enter more values yes or no um, okay if um, input more values 
So if more values equals no, then continue equals one. So that means if it continues changes from zero to one, that means it stops working, that's fine. If they type anything else in, there's not really any validation. They could type anything. Um, they could type in blue or sky or green or, or black and it would it would start the calculator again. But I'm not worried about that. Um, that's just validation. Um, what we've got here, end if, we've got until continue equals zero. So we've not really got anything to sort of end this loop. We've got a while loop, but we've not closed in line two. We've got a while loop, but we've not closed that while loop. So what I'm going to do in line 22, rather than having until continue equals zero, all I'm going to do for that, all I'm going to do for that is put in, just close the while loop off. So end while. Remember in pseudocode, we've got to close all of our loops. So we've got the while in line two, and I'm going to end the while. So there we go. There's five errors identified and five potential changes we could do. That one, although it looked complicated, because we know how it's working as a calculator, it might just make matters a little bit easier. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. There are three examples from three past papers. I hope that's helped. Um, that is the sort of thing we need to be doing. Um, thank you very much for watching. That is it. That's Chapter 7 completed. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.